from in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America can get together to talk about the issues you really care about. Say it if you're paying attention. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 Six, six. Thank you for tuning again. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Look at this story from CNN. From CNN.com. It's called, Do You Mommy Your Husband? Here's the story. Kristen Rounds, 26 admits that she's a little gaga over her man. I'm like his mommy. The Monterey Park, California resident says with a laugh about her fiancé, a first-year medical student. Case in point. She picks out his clothes before they go out, meow. Styles his hair. Makes his lunches complete with I love you notes inside. And takes it upon herself to apply the toothpaste before handing him his toothbrush each night. And then there's bathing. <laughs> when he's in the shower, he calls me in to wash his back, says Rounds, a publicist. Why am I not surprised at that? Over-the-top behavior? Round says, no way. He loves to be taken care of. It's a scenario familiar to many relationship experts who say that first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the husband in the baby carriage. <laughs> Nurturing Gene on Overdrive. Women find themselves mothering their husbands because of societal pressures to be the ultimate woman, says Pepper Schwartz. There's a name I haven't seen in a while. Sociology professor at the University of Washington in Seattle. We've been taught that the way to show love is to do for others, she says. And according to Schwartz, some women believe that the more they nurture, the better a woman they are. I was at a dinner party once, she says. And I watched a woman lean over and start cutting up her husband's meat. She came over here and cut up my meat there. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can just salt it for me. A bad idea? Well, it can work for some people, says Les Parrott. A clinical psychologist and author on marriage and relationship topics and a professor at Seattle Pacific University. Are all the people in this article from Seattle? <laughs> he describes one couple he knows. She packs his suitcase for him and takes care of him like a little kid. But it works for them. Even so, Parrot and other experts are quick to point out that while a certain amount of nurturing is harmless, it can escalate and lead to relationship trouble. First, you're tucking in his shirt, Schwartz says. Then you're wiping his mouth. And at some point, it's going to become a problem. It was a problem for New York City resident Linda Franklin's marriage. As a woman who mothered her husband for too many years... 
I can report it's about a wor- the worst thing a woman can do, says Franklin. 55, a writer and lifestyle coach for female baby boomers. <laughs> 55 is just the beginning of your life, girls. You're just getting started. You go, girl. It makes your man lazy, unwilling, and for, to be prote- proactive in his own health care. And for the most part, a boy who refuses to grow up. There's that phrase again about guys, refusing to grow up. It took me a long time to understand you can be compassionate and loving without being smothering and controlling. Is that so? Says here, Franklin says she resisted the urge to mother her husband so much. And the result has been a happier marriage. Blame it on the hormone oxyto- oxytocin. Oxytocin, I guess it is. It says Florida-based psychologist and social worker Leslie Beth Wish. You've got the guy named Parrot and the woman named Wish. It makes women feel tender, close, and cuddly to their newborn and other children, and maybe husbands, too. Endorphins also play a role, says <laughs> Tina Tassina. Didn't I see her on VH1? Tina Tassina? A psychotherapist in Long Beach, California, and the author of Money, Sex, and Kids. Stop fighting about the three things that can ruin your marriage. Endorphins flow heavily in new mothers, and they are the same hormones we feel when we connect to a husband. It's pretty easy to confuse the two. Ever found yourself nagging your husband to take his daily multivitamin or worse, bringing it to him with a glass of water? Don't go there, Schwartz says. Instead, quote, put it on the table, tell him you love him, and then shut up. It's my kind of girl. Give me what I need and just shut up. Shut your crap. Says here the same goes for other coddling behaviors like pestering him to eat his vegetables. Too much of this type of communication, she says, and your relationship is likely to signal an SOS. Babying the man in your life can mean two things, Tasina says. A, you've been spending too much time being mommy and may need a break from the kids. Or B, you need more adult contact, whether it be a weekend away with the girls, oh, heaven forbid, or a few hours at the mall while the kids are with a sitter. Tasina says that normal nurturing, cooking for him, massaging him, tending to him when he's sick, can feel motherly if you're too controlling about it. Instead, she says, tell him what you'd like to do to help him and ask him if he wants that kind of help. This evens the field and makes you equals. And if you catch yourself talking to him as if he's your child, switch modes to Cena says. Exaggerate to make a joke out of it. Would Snuggy Uggums wake a widow kissy? <laughs> Follow my God, I am so tired of talking baby talk, but I can't seem to change gears. Kill me if I ever get married again. I mean, really, guys, promise me. Just put the gun to my head and blast away. All right? If I, oh, right there. Hit it. Kill me. Yes. I got 20 acres. No one will ever know you did it. Just bury me out in my own yard and be done with it. God. Oh, yeah, then you'd be losing your job. You'd be engineering, uh, what, the Sam Phillips show. We all miss Tom very much, but uh, we got to move on now. Uh, the life moves on. Dump that bitch. Dump that bitch. All right, let's talk about dump that. Remember Tom used to talk about dump that? We can talk about that. Bottom line, Schwartz says, a normal amount of nurturing is fine, but to keep a relationship healthy, show your affection in a respectful way. After all, one thing is certain, she says, he doesn't want to be married to his mother. By the way, I think most guys want to be married to their mother. I think that's exactly wrong. (laughs) Most guys I know marry chicks that are like mom. At least they think they're like mom. Well, there's a few things she does that mom probably would never do, but uh, there you go. So that's uh, the story. That's on CNN. CNN, the world's most important network. That's on the <laughs> that's on the CNN website. <laughs> 
Ooh, baby. All right. Well, look. All I can say about this is the following. It's just more in the nagging category, more in the... Yeah, how, what kind of a pussy are you if you need your wife? You, first of all, if you need to get married, A. B, if you need your wife to come in with your little vitamin, your little glass of water, you take your little drinky, your little pill. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. I don't know what I hate more. I don't know if I hate someone being an out and out, balls out bitch. Or somebody who's like, did you eat your broccoli? <laughs> oh, God. Just save me. Save me. Sometimes I come in, I read this stuff, I'm like, I'm, I'm beyond belief. I can't. What do you say about this? What do you say about an article like that? There's people whose first name is doctor quoted in that article. Are, are you kidding me? Holy cow. You know, when I'm sick, the entire bullpen checks in, you know, when I'm sick, the bullpen calls over to see what I need. Uh, well, that's great. But you know what I need? Leave me alone. <laughs> Stay away. Please. Please don't come over. Please don't help me. If I need something, the drugstore delivers. Please don't be coming over. First of all, when you live in Southern California, whoever you're dating, whoever it is, they don't live near you. <laughs> it's very rare that they live anywhere near where you are. Do you really want to be? My house... Four floors. My bedroom is on the second floor. So when you come in the house, you have to walk down a flight of stairs. Meaning, ladies, if you come to my home and I'm sick, I have to get out of bed and walk up a flight of stairs to let you in. Not worth it. When I'm sick, pretend I don't exist. Go back to the other guys you're boning. Please don't come on. Please. I'm begging. <sighs> painful. The whole thing is painful. I can't relate to any of this stuff. I can't. I can't believe I was ever married. I can't believe things like this ever happened to me. I used to be with chicks. If I had to get, let's say I had to get up in the morning to do a TV interview and I was supposed to be on the set at 645 to be interviewed at 715. Okay. And that's happened many times. I've had chicks who get up at five and start going, honey, it's five o'clock. You're supposed to be there by 645. I just want to let you know. All right. Thanks a lot. Honey, it's 515. You're going to be late. Honey, it's 522. The last chick who lived with me used to incessantly remind me of what time I had to be to work. And the result was, I just like I wouldn't take the garbage out when she asked me to take the garbage out, I would just putter around, <laughs> putter around the house, 215, 220, 225. <laughs> Come on, you're going to be late. You're going to be late. <sighs> I'm so much happier when no one's telling me what to do. Nobody's helping. Nobody's spoon feeding me. <laughs> I mean, do you like this kind of treatment? Do you like doing this to people? Please do tell. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Yo, amigo. Come join the party of the year on Cinco de Mayo. Broadcast live from Camacho's in the city of industry. For details, go to blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show. Like a show, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Amy on the Tom Like a show. Hello. Hi Tom, how are you? I'm doing great. 
That's good. Um, I don't listen to you very often um, because I don't usually have the car when I drive home, but I've been fortunate enough the last couple of weeks to be able to listen to you. And i got to say, you know, I, like I really do enjoy your show. It's very entertaining, but I'm a little bit confused this afternoon because I feel like, you know, you call women, uh, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss on air, but, you know. Bitches yeah. and whores? Yeah, bitches and whores. Yes, All you right. can say that. Or sluts. Okay, sluts, I was going to say. Skanks. Skanky hoes. Skanky, skanky hoes. Whores. Yes. No. Anyway, and I think, all right, well, fair enough. There, there are a lot of skanky, bitchy hoes out there. But at the same time, then with the CNN story, there are women that are nurturing their guys and really looking after them. And then you've got a problem with that as well. So I guess I'm trying to understand, like, what is your ideal woman? Like, what is going to... My ideal woman it turns into a six-pack and a sandwich after I eff her. Really? That's right. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, I just thought I'd, I'd ask because it just seems to me that, you know, either way, you're not happy. No, I just want them to, you know, accept what I'm delivering and then uh, be done with me. Yeah, you know, I get you. I feel you. Fair enough. Oh, you have no idea. You haven't felt me yet, dear, but trust me when I tell you. You know what? I'm not that lucky, Tom. I know, but, yeah. uh, well, we can take care of that. Really? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how my husband would feel about that. No, I'm not worried about that. Really? I think he is, though. <laughs> Only if you tell him. Yeah, you know, I think he might be listening right now. Yeah? What do you look like? He's really handsome. Not him. You. I don't care what he oh, looks me? like. Oh, me? Oh, I don't know. You know, just a chick. You're just a chick? Just a chick. You know, just a chick who does her thing. That Nothing. usually means a chunky chick. Oh, absolutely not. No? No! You said you're just a chick. I'm, yeah, you know, I'm just a girl. She just does her thing. Who loves her man? But well, what do you look like? Um, I, you know, I'm like maybe five four, um, and I've got um, like dark hair. Yeah. Um, small build. Yes. Um, and a great big happy smile and a friendly face. How's friendly. that? So small knockers, I take it. I beg your pardon. Small knockers, then? I take it. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, they're average, I guess. Why are you asking about my breast size? And why am I telling you? <laughs> I think you know. You know, I don't know. I, you have this way of getting information out of people, I think. But I, you, I have this way of getting all kinds of things out of people. Really? Well, that's I guess I do. Uh, I guess, um, like, being unlike, a star. Oh, unlike most of the little boys who call in here, I've got confidence. I've got big brass balls. I'm, yeah. I can close the deal. I'm pretty sure you can, Tom. And um, you know, I, I wish you all the best for that. You know, I hope you get laid tonight. You think I need luck, darling? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you don't. I'm sure you don't. The way that uh, that you talk and your experience, and I, I'm sure you do really well for yourself. I do indeed. Yeah. All right. Well, you let me know when things don't work out with Mr. Wright over there. I'll be with him forever. I love him to death. That's what they all say. No, it's true. Mm, sure. Yeah. All right. Well, it was very nice to talk to you. It sure was. All right. Well, have a good day. You too. <laughs> oh, yeah. 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's Curtis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Doing great. God, I got to tell you, I'm 19 years old, all right? I go to school out here, and I know this girl. Her name's Caitlin, okay? She just turned 20, and her boyfriend, Rob. Is her last 40... name Faber? What? Is her last name Faber? No, no, it's not. Oh, okay. Um, go to school with her anyways. Her boyfriend's 26, okay? She's 20. She's gorgeous. She's drop-dead. She's stunning. She's amazing. But she is the most, hands-down, controlling girlfriend I've ever heard. Best example I can give you, this St. Patrick's Day... We're all getting hammered at my friend's house. Wait, no, we're not drinking because we're all underage. We're all having soda and stuff at my friend's house. And, You're uh, all drinking Mountain <laughs> Dew, yes. Right, exactly, exactly. <clears throat> Code red, yes. And whatever. Um, it, it's about 12, 12, 15 in the morning. She goes, okay, honey, got to go. And I was like, Rob, you can't leave yet. That's not cool. And she's like, he has work at 2 p.m. And I'm like, 2 p.m.? He could be out for five more hours and still be fine. Long story short, Tom. This chick is just, it is just insane just how he, how she coddles him and tells him what to do. And it's just always, 
on his ass about everything. It's just ridiculous. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, I can't stand it. I mean, I'm not in a relationship. It bugs the crap out of me when I see it happen. It's like these guys have no sack. I just, I can't take it. it it's just, it, it pisses me off oh. if it happened to other guys. I'm telling you, though, if you really want to make yourself sick, Ikea, Saturday morning. Oh, 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 I know. 50 Cent Hot Dogs, Tom. I'm in college. I'm there all the time. And Swedish meatballs. Yes, sir. But anyways, Tom, I just wanted to By the way, that. do you know, know how many centimeters are in an inch? What's that? Do you know how many centimeters are in an inch? No, I don't. Not off the top of my head. Tom. Well, you need to know that in order to put together the uh, credenza over there, or the uh, bookshelves. <laughs> Good thing I can't afford that furniture. Yes. But and anyway, my former Tom, broadcast partner, Alan Wrench, uh, he's over there. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, Tom. Could you just, just blow me up? I certainly can. Him and my friend Philip Screwdriver. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's go to Bonnie. Bonnie is listening to our show on the online stream. She's calling from Bethany Beach, Delaware on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Kill me if I marry again. <laughs> Kill you if you marry again? Yes, kill me if I marry again. Why do you say that? <laughs> because I've been married and divorced 11 times, and 11. I'm tired of it. 11 times. Yes, no matter who you marry, marriage is so overrated that it's... What, what, you know, even I was only stupid four times. I was stupid 11. And, and let me tell you how stupid two of the men were. Two of them married me three times each. Now you're like you're like the Grover Cleveland of of wives. Is that stupid or what? I thought I was stupid, but that was really stupid. But I mean, when you said there's kill me if I marry, there's again. nothing like women calling me and telling me how stupid they are. That makes my day. It uh, does it. <laughs> I had I had a girlfriend who stayed married for a year in a terrible relationship because one more year he was in the military meant that she got half of his retirement. And I said, how in the heck can you stay with a guy you don't love and have him touch you in the bedroom? I'm sorry. I'd rather live in a box with by myself than live in a mansion with a man that I don't love and I don't want to touch me. And you probably do live in a box, right? No, I don't live in a box. I live in a really nice beach house. Thank you very much. How'd you get that? How? Oh, I didn't get any settlements from men. I have five real estate licenses, and I five a, real estate licenses. Yes. Is and, that one for every last name you've had? No, one for every state I lived in. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally did. Kind write of the it. same difference. I finally did write a book about the eleven marriages, which really was kind of great you know everybody was real interested to read about this stupid woman who actually married 11 times yeah it's called till death do us fart i think it's, i saw that no it's it is not it's called ex-husband and freezer <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it you gotta oh, love i see it. ex-husband and freezer that's great and let me tell you why it's called that because after the fifth or sixth divorce I put this magnet on my refrigerator that said ex-husband and freezer, knowing that no man in his right mind would marry me after that. Well, it didn't work. It's still on my freezer. Oh, no. The nastier you are, the more threatening you are, uh, the more you attract. Uh, trust me, it works with women all the time. Mark, what do you want to say to Bonnie? <laughs> I just, I'm just curious. You know, I hear about this uh, story of some guy that got a DUI. He got 19 DUIs, and they say he deserved another chance. What are you doing marrying 11 guys or... Four guys, three seven times guys, each. seven guys, eleven times. I mean, what are you thinking? You, you, you know, I can't really answer that. I was just insane, and I was desperate. And most women are desperate. They need a man to make them feel whole. They need a man's money for financial support. They just stay in the marriage for children. Money. Who was the best? Who was the best in the sack? Oh, oh, my last one. He How was, many times was, did you marry him? He was 60-some years old. Three times. Oh, my God. So what number of marriages was he? He was number 9, 10, and 11. 9, 10, and 11 was the best in the sack. Oh, he was the best in the sack. He was like 63 years old. Oh, wow. Really? Now, who was the worst in the sack? 
number two, three, and four. Number two, three, and four was not very good. And he was the same, yeah, all the same man. But and he wasn't yeah. even good as number one. Oh, God, I just married to get out of my father's house because my father's a minister. I see. So was he number one? Um, was who number one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're being bad. Yes, I, <laughs> darling, you love it when I'm bad. No, I married I married this guy I knew through school, all through school, and we just wanted to get out from under our parents, so we, we just got married. And, That's and what then, I'm talking about. From under our parents. Come I'll on. But you did. You're, you're taking that literally. <laughs> you're taking it literally. Yes. <laughs> I don't I don't think that's a Freudian slip there. <laughs> but, I don't think you're wearing any slip at all. Uh, oh, God. You are really bad. And you know your website. I mean, I cannot believe that you have something on your website that says bang a new uh, babe every night. You can't believe that? I can't believe that. Would you rather say marry a new babe every night oh, like you? He no, heck no. Heck no. No, 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 no. Marriage is a bad word, and it's overrated. And if people tell you they're happily married, they're friggin' lying. When's the last time you got laid, Bunny? Um. Oh, I don't know. It was several months ago. Several months ago? Uh-huh. Why? Why? Because I thought that... I like this guy, and you're I afraid thought, you're going to marry him again. No, no, heck no! Uh, I thought he was going to move in, and we were going to just like live in sin for a while because you know my father always says it's living in sin if you don't marry him. And I thought this will be fun; we'll live in sin for a while. So we did. But your father has no problem with divorcing eleven times. Oh, he's got a real big problem. It, in his mind, I'm still married to number one. Maybe I'm, nine, ten, and eleven can come over and shack up with you. Oh, I wish. <laughs> I bet you do. You know that's the only. You know that's the only thing marriage is good for. If if it's good in the bedroom and you can have it every night, then I agree with marrying. Them. Yeah. So your thing is you need to get boned, but uh, unfortunately, you feel the need to get married. I, I don't know. Well, I used to. I don't feel like I have to get married anymore. Screw that. I, really? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get married anymore. Screw that. Screw this. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. When you're alone, you wake up. You got a hundred different things you can do in one day, right? When you're in a relationship, you have one thing: what she wants to do. It's the Tom Likas Show. To you from Hollywood at one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. As we started off this hour talking about women who baby, baby, they're men. 1-800-5-800-866. Estelle. Estelle. Hello. You're on the top like us. Hello. It was a fire at Hollywood and Vine. I was wondering if anybody saw that. I went there years ago. It was the Brown Derby. Does anybody remember the Brown Derby? It was a restaurant. William Holden used to eat there years ago, and it was a fire. I was watching this morning on KNXT Channel 2, and I saw the fire. There were flames everywhere. I was wondering if anybody had seen this fire. Uh, there was smoke billowing up. I could see it from my house. I live over on Yucca Street, and I could see it. And it, it, I'm wondering if anybody saw the fire in Hollywood and Vine. All right. We'll see if anyone else calls in, Estelle. Thank you. No, this is Estelle. Estelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. <laughs> Are you there? Hello? I thought the whole block was going to go up in flames. And pour a glass of wine here while we wait for Estelle to realize she's on the she's on the 72nd plan, waiting for the delay to play through, listening to the radio for her cue. 
obviously we're in delay so we can delete the obscenities and the various libelous and slanderous things people try to get out on the air and edit them out. And so uh, there she is, uh, waiting to hear her name, Estelle, waiting to hear it on the air. Once 70 seconds have passed, she will grab the phone. Hello, hello. Yes. Oh, there she is. Hello, Estelle. Hey, baby. What you doing? Still a radio show here, darling. I was just, uh, honey, you don't even know. Like, um, how are you doing? Don't you know by now? I know how you're doing. You're doing fine. Yes, I am. I know you are, darling. So I was wondering what you want to talk about. Uh, you call me, dear. Okay. So I'm supposed to talk to you about something? Actually, there was another. Well, isn't that what happens when we give out the number? You're supposed to call and talk about something. Actually, we had a listener who had called in who had a question. Uh, maybe she wants to talk to you about it. Yes, I was wondering if you saw the fire in Hollywood and Vine today. Somebody wants to talk to me? Well, that makes Yes. Yes, dear. <laughs> I've been calling everybody. I've been wondering if you saw the fire at Hollywood and Vine. I don't, I don't know those people. Hang up on them. Oh. But she just wanted to know if you'd seen the fire at Hollywood and Vine today. No. No? No, I live in Santa Monica on the west side. Oh, no. This was in Hollywood, dear. Okay. Well, Sorry. <laughs> I'll put her back on hold. Okay, listen. Yeah. So, um, you want to listen to me? What do you think I'm doing? I don't know. Playing games? We yeah, are playing games. Yeah, that's the way you This are. is my show. You like it like that, don't you? Oh, yeah, I like it like that, dear. Come over here and play games with me. You like it, don't you, baby? <laughs> well, I don't know what it is I'm getting yet. <laughs> okay, Tom? Yes, yeah, Estelle. I'm Estelle. I know. I've said that repeatedly. Okay, good. You were not listening at the time. That's okay. Sometimes I don't listen. That's that's. Uh, that's clear. It's part of the package. Part of the package. Yes. That's right. So, um, okay, I guess I'm calling to ask you because I don't know if I'm going to ask This is like you. Chinese water torture. Why don't you just get to the point, darling? Okay. I'll get to the point. I'm sad. When will that be? Should I make an appointment? <laughs> you would like to make an appointment with me. No, I have no idea what you are or why I would make an appointment with you because all you've done so far is filibuster. Well, that's a great filibuster. We've got. So going. you're an attention whore and you want to eat up as much airtime as possible? Is that what you're telling us? Not exactly. Well, why don't you get I've to the point? What is the point? Before. I've, I've just been listening to you for a long time. And? And I decided that I would like to call in. About? About. The thing that I would like to call in about is meaning that you I'm I'm searching for advice from you about so you would like me to ask you advice. Yes, I'd like you to do that right now. All right. I'd like you to not you've already wasted 3 minutes and 55 seconds of oh. airtime. And I know you're pleased about that too cuz you'd love to waste the entire show, but I can't let you do that. So you're either going to make the point now. Okay. Or you can tell Dean what it is. Dean will be happy to come in and uh, explain what you said later on. Okay. It's easy like this. Um I got a man and uh, I, he's completely in love with me. I love you, I love you, I love you. And I'm, like, not um, the same way, you know? And I just thought it was funny in your show, like, you can play all those games you want, but here's the deal. Like, uh, you want to keep putting those little things there, it's fine, it's fine. Here's the deal. With the you can't use that word on the oh, air. Come I on. No, no, you're not him. stupid, too, are you? Come I'm on. Not, no, God knows I'm not. What stupid. made you think you could say the F word on the radio? Okay, sorry, dear. You Come on. Did you really think you could After say the F word I on the radio? I'm in love with him. Um, he's, like, completely in love with me, and um, I just don't know what to do with that. You don't know what to do with that? Dump him. Dump him? There you go. <laughs> oh. I, I'm i convinced that woman works at a competing radio station and just wanted to lull everybody to sleep. 
There's somebody sitting over at, you know, one of the all sports stations, because they got a lot of outgoing lines they can dial out on since nobody's calling in. That's one of those new bile young producers who's sitting there <laughs> dialing out. And she never told us about Hollywood and Vine. Yeah, I understand that, but uh, <laughs> we're waiting for anybody who's seen that fire to call it and give you the details. It was billowing up. The smoke was billowing up. I was watching it on on Channel 2 and Channel 5 and KHJ-TV Channel 9. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to... (laughs) Yes. That's exactly what it sounded like. I hope William Holden was okay and looked pretty serious. One eight hundred five eight hundred Thomas, our telephone number. Trevlin What's on the top on, line. Tom? Trevlin. Uh, by the way, let me get you. You only use with a doctor's care. Okay. All right. Side effects include. Ask your doctor if Trevlin is right for you. Go ahead. All right. Hey, first of all, I want to call and say it's women like the last one, Estelle, could be so stupid and have guys do anything for attention. She was crying for attention. She doesn't need a boyfriend. She needs a vibrator. And even that would probably get tired of her. Oh, my God. She's killing me. She's absolutely killing. Wait, we have this other caller here. Did you see the fire at Hollywood and Vine today? No, I didn't. It I'm was sorry. on television. Really? You know what? I you know who I didn't see. Normally, he would cover all the big stories. Hal Fishman was not there. I don't know what happened. Well, the thing is, I'm Mexican, so I want to get basic cable. So if it doesn't happen on there, you know. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. At my mom's house, I have the illegal cable because that's how we do it. That's how we do. <laughs> you know, but I mean, you know, I got a, that guy who called in said he messed up since high school and had that girlfriend. Nah, all these guys this week have been calling are such wussies. You know what I'm saying? Yes. They need to grow a pair, and it's like this. Me, I am not that much of an attractive guy. I'm a cute guy, but... I'm not like where women would die for me. And you know what? You don't have to be. What you have to do is be confident and know what you want. I've been with a girl who tried to control my life. Yes. She seriously wanted to get married. She said jump. I said how high. Right. And then I realized that I would rather die than to be like that. And you know what? It's not so bad. I totally agree. I mean, if you just, who cares? You grow up here and you know what you want. You go for what you want, and if a girl wants it, cool. If not, that's extra space, worry, time you don't need in your life. That's why most of the girls are with these a-holes, supposedly, because A, they don't care. B, they know what they want. And if you really, really want to get into a girl's kind of liking, all you got to do is talk to her. Before you try and stimulate anything, stimulate her mind. Once the mind's stimulated... First, you have to find her mind. You probably need GPS in most of these broads. Seriously. Well, yeah, you know, I, I don't even know. You, you want to get their mind? Open up your credit card or your wallet, and uh, <laughs> we'll get their mind right there. <laughs> you know, and I don't know, like that, that last lady, Estelle. I mean, seriously, I I don't know. It's, not, you know, it's not worth the effort. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, I mean, a lot of guys are probably like, you know what, I don't know. I'll just stick with her because I'm getting some every night. You don't have to put up with headaches and stress and, and you know, be it's like be your own boss, you know, know what you want, go for it. If you get it, you get it, you don't, you don't. And a what lot am I supposed to do about my cat? My cat, Mr. Peepers. He's been coughing all day because of the smoke. Oh, sweetie, you know what you can do? Give your pat your cat, Mr. Peepers, to Estelle because they're on the same wavelength. <laughs> It's probably equal when it comes to IQ. So I don't think I want to give my cat away. I don't think that would be a good idea. I'll tell you what. Ask any guy. Giving cat away is probably the best thing ever. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show.